one blast off hey what's up everybody Jared dog here with another edition of the 420 report where i'm going to try to come to you on at least a semi-daily basis at 4:20 p.m little recap check in recap of my day uh give my thoughts on what's going on address some topics that come into me on questions on facebook matt deerfield what's up buddy what's going on with you today man uh, check out thebarcomic.com. That's my website. I'm also on YouTube uh, under the Bar Comic. Uh, Instagram, the Bar Comics. Pretty much everything is under the Bar Comic, uh, except for Twitter. I think that's Mighty Chair Dog. Anyway, uh, what do we have going on today? Let me plug my dates. This Friday, I'll be in Adrian, Michigan. I fucking love Michigan, baby. Probably one of my favorite states to do comedy in. I don't know why. I just fit in really well with the culture there. Hey, John Fells, what's up? Jeff Danley, my cousin. Cousin, what's up, buddy? Uh, Saturday, this Saturday, uh, the 10th, I'll be in Springfield, Ohio at the Machinist Club with Katrina Brown doing the He Said, She Said comedy show. I'll be at the Brickwall Pub and Grill Friday night in Adrian, Michigan doing my one-man show. That's just going to be a quick, fun, easy little uh, deal. And I'm looking forward to it. I love doing shows in Michigan, man. Um, probably stop by and see my good friend Bob LaFada on the way there it's in uh, Gary, Indiana. So I'm looking forward to that, man. What's up, Bob? Good to see you here. And then next week, we have a really big event. This is the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show, which I do with Nathan Allen, the Maniac of Magic. And we are going to be in Springfield, Illinois, at the Eagles Club there, uh, doing a benefit for... Uh, Fathers of Illinois, Illinois Fathers. It's a singles dad foundation. We're raising, it goes to a good cause. The money goes towards, uh, the proceeds go towards the Illinois Fathers organization. So basically helping out single fathers around the country. They need help too. So that's going to be next Saturday, June 17th at the Eagles Club. I'll post all the information below so you guys can get tickets if you want, if you're in the area. Jose, what's up, man? You're in Jackson, Michigan. Come see me and Adrian this Friday, buddy. I'll be at the Brick Wall Pub. I think that shows at 9 o'clock. Not sure. I'll post it under here anyway. Uh, last night took Mrs. Jerdog, hot Karen, as some of you know her from Instagram, uh, from my Instagram post. It's not something that she sanctioned, quite frankly. I just started posting pictures of her on Instagram to try to build up my following, which I think I've got a few more followers. But... Uh, we went out to see our Tuesday night, weekly Tuesday night date night. We went out to see Wonder Woman last night, which I thought was actually a really good movie. I was pretty impressed with it. Not because it's a superhero, woman's superhero movie, which is what I thought was kind of bullshit anyways. People are getting online or leaving these reviews like, oh, it's a woman superhero. It better be good. It's a fucking superhero movie, dude. Of course it's going to be good. I love all the superhero movies. But the reason why I say I was actually pretty impressed by it is I've been a little bit disappointed with what DC has been putting out lately. Suicide Squad, I thought was okay in parts, but for the most part it sucked. It was okay here and there, but for the most part it was, it was, it was drug on. It was like there was too much going on. Too many characters. Plus, it's got that guy, that prick that's in House of Cards that I hate so much. He's in there. He's supposed to be a good guy. Anyway, I, did, I didn't really get into the Suicide Squad. I was so pumped and excited for it. And then it was just kind of a letdown. And it was the same thing with Superman versus Batman. I was so excited for Superman versus Batman. Then there's just all this complicated bullshit going on with the plot, and it just wasn't as much fun to watch. What I really liked about the Wonder Woman movie was they used all those like Matrix style slow motion fighting special effects, like oh, and it looks really cool here when I'm doing it on Facebook Live. It's like this. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so cool to watch the action like that. You can really tell what's going on. Um, but something that has annoyed me about the whole Wonder Woman movie is that it's turned into this man-woman, sexist bullshit kind of conversation. Uh, with like, oh man, finally a woman showing her power. She's a fucking demigod. Of course she's going to show her power. You know? Oh, she owned her power. You know what? It's easy to own your power. When you're a kick-ass demigod, it's, she wasn't owning her power. She was demonstrating her power. Here's what's difficult to own. Own your fucking faults. Own your flaws. That's what's difficult. Get behind the shit that you're screwing up. 
and stand behind it. No volume. You can't hear me? For real? No volume? Can you guys hear me? I know Jose can hear me because he told me to come see the show this weekend. Turn your volume up, Maureen. Hey, Tammy's here. Matt Jansen's here. Good to have you guys. Um, got some other topics here that I'm going to go off on. Left uh, Some people left me a comment yesterday about the petition to legalize recreational marijuana in Michigan. How could it be reopened and more successful? That was a question left by Katie Kane. What my thoughts on that are? And here's my thoughts on legalizing recreational marijuana. If it happens, quite frankly, it's a goddamn miracle. It's a goddamn miracle because there's so many people that have like something against it where they just don't want that to happen. Hey, Tammy, what's up? And uh, the problem is the people that are in support of it, if they smoke it, they're not motivated enough to go out and, and be an activist. They can't even get their lazy asses off the couch to fucking go vote. The people that don't smoke it, that uh, but don't care, they just don't care. They're kind of indifferent. It's really difficult to rally the troops in order to get people to go out there, you know, make their voices heard through voting and get that shit passed. If you want to legalize recreational marijuana, put the ballot in a fucking box of cereal or a menu option on a video game, just like I say in my act. That's the only way it's going to get done, man. A lot of smart stoners out there, a lot of stupid stoners out there. And it's the stupid ones that give us respectable ones a bad name. And I don't like that shit. Uh, what else? How about people posting pics of you doing seemingly creepy things like smiling at me in the blocks? <laughs> right, this is my friend Troy Lida, where somebody from our high school graduating class found some old pictures from back in the day, like 1992 or 93, where we were out for track, and my, one of my best friends in high school, he was running the hurdles, and he's, you know, he's in a starting position in the starting blocks, and I was up behind him. I don't know what I was doing, like holding on to his gear or something, but the picture looks really creepy, where I'm just staring straight down at his ass with this disgusting grin on my face, very shit-eating grin. And this is something I want to talk about, man. People get real concerned about what you post online. Don't post embarrassing pictures. Don't put up anything that you're going to not be proud of later on. Well, what about all the fucking shit that took place back in the 90s before we even knew there was internet? And people are snapping pictures all over the place, and you don't know what the hell was out there. You don't know what's getting developed in film. There's all kinds of embarrassing photos out there that people just scan right into their computer and post that shit. So so now you have to like be retroactive to not do embarrassing shit that might uh, humiliate you online. It is, it's creepy, man. Privacy is dead in this country, and it's creepy. That's one reason why I'm trying to I'm trying to get ahead of that stuff by posting online videos each and every day, or as much as humanly possible, to at least take control of the conversation, put out the stuff that I want to put out, I'll stand behind what I say, even if that sounds stupid and fucked up, at least I'm putting something out there to combat those creepy pictures that people took of me in high school from 1992, where I've got some special ed haircut, I'm looking at my best friend's ass while he's trying to get ready to run hurdles, it's fucking weird, man, I don't know if I'm comfortable with it. Then again, I am in show business. Who cares? Give me some haters. Like I said the other day, bring on the haters. There's really not much I can do that's going to embarrass myself at this point. In fact, another good example of that is a show that I used to do with my friend John Donovan, who left me a comment, that talked about how the time that I squirted the big black dude with water from backstage and almost got us all killed. Yeah, see, I've done all kinds of crazy shit in show business. It's, it's been videotaped. It's been photographed. It's been put up online. You know... I don't know, at least I'm in show business. I don't have some regular corporate job that I have to go to where I might get fired if I write the wrong thing on Facebook. I think that's a bunch of horseshit. I really do, man. Who cares what you do in your private life? It's, if, as long as you're doing a good job where you work, that's all that should matter. And like I said, if you did some embarrassing shit back in the day that then some... Uh, 
photographs resurfaces and get spread all over the internet, that could fuck you up too when you didn't even know there was going to be an internet invented. It's kind of bullshit that people have to like retroactively monitor their behavior because of that. You know, technology is kind of screwing us over in a lot of ways. I think it's really cool that I'm able to broadcast out live on Facebook as much as I want and put things up on YouTube. I don't need to go to some TV station and try to convince somebody to put me on the air. I've got my computer right here. Just start broadcasting live to a full seven viewers. Hey, Heather, what's up? Jose's here too, man. Come see me this uh, weekend. I'm going to be in Adrian, Michigan at the Brick Wall Pub. It's a 8 o'clock show, I think, even if it's a 9 o'clock show. Just come at 8, and we'll party beforehand. And then uh, Springfield, Ohio, with Katrina Brown, the He Said, She Said comedy show. And that's one of my most favorite shows to do right now because we take live questions from the audience, whatever they want to talk about regarding life, love, relationships, sex, drugs, rock and roll. We take all comers. We answer it all. No holds barred. And it's completely improv. No two shows are ever the same. I've got completely new material just from that Q&A. It's a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, Heather, with the amen and the thumbs up. Jeff Combs, buddy. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. i got some gunfighters on here. I'll tell some old gunfight stories. If you see me right up here, right up here, there I am blasting away. That picture's called the joy of blasting. Firing off some shots. Pull this down so you guys can get a better Look at this. So back in the day, back in the day, one of my first gigs in show business, I did this for about 10 years, I was a uh, performer in a Comedy Wild West show, Shenanigans. It was so fun. And J.D. Posey, who also did the show with us, he left a comment, tell us your favorite show you've ever done and why. And as much as I love doing stand-up, probably the most fun time I've ever had in show business is doing that Comedy Wild West show. It didn't pay that good. It paid good enough for a young 20-year-old kid with no bills, but not quite enough to sustain a career. I started going into stand-up, and that just kept me busy. I did the Wild West show for 10 years. It was so fun. All the guys there were crazy. They're just like me, just a bunch of drunk stoners. And we got up every day at noon and went and did six hours of shows in a sweltering ass, 100-degree amusement park. You know, we, we were getting uh, heckled by people walking by. You got the roller coaster going, making all kinds of loud noises. You had to overcome all these kinds of challenges. And I think I really appreciate that experience because it toughened me up. You know, I'm sweating my ass off. The audience is hot as hell. One of the tricks of comedy is to keep the audience nice and cool and comfortable at all times. You get more laughs that way. But when you're doing a show outside in the summertime on blacktop, everybody is roasting their asses off. It's a real challenge to make them laugh, and we figured out how to do it. It toughened me up, so by the time I got to go into comedy clubs where everybody was in a nice, comfortable environment, it was a, it was a cool place to be, and they're drinking and having fun, it, just, it was just so easy. It was like that Wild West show for 10 years is my comedy boot camp. And there was one time at Six Flags Over Georgia, my very last summer there, which was probably a good thing because I was about three seconds from getting fired. Uh, we had this little peephole in the wall that went from backstage out to the street, and there was a garden hose that we could stick through that peephole. And as folks walked by, I would just hit the trigger and douse them with a little bit of water. I didn't want to like ruin anybody's clothes or anything. I just liked messing with people. It was like a prank. Anyway, this huge, big, black I don't know why it matters that he's black. Just some huge, badass-looking motherfucker comes walking by. I'm like, this would be the best guy to squirt, man. This is like this big, macho dude. So I'm aiming, I'm aiming, and he sees that people are getting blasted with that water, and he even makes a throw. He says, you better not hit me with that. And as soon as he walks by, bump, sprayed him just a little bit. Totally has a meltdown. Comes up to the dressing room. He starts pounding on the door. We like we quickly lock it with this eye hook, and he's beating that, and that thing's almost ready to bust open. Finally, like our supervisor, a uh, guy named Mad Mike, who's just crazy enough, opens up the door. He's like, "Hey, go away!" You know, whatever. And the guy was like, "Don't be spraying me with water." And we had a little, I don't know, a little verbal exchange, and then we all got into an argument backstage. But that's par for the course. We argued every goddamn day. 
like at the Jackson Fair. That's right, Heather. You saw me in the Wild West show at the Jackson County Fair. It was. It's two totally different sides of me. When I do that Wild West show, there's families there. There's kids there. You have to keep it squeaky clean. When I do my stand-up comedy show, I get rated R. Damn near rated X sometimes. I don't give a fuck. I'll just say whatever comes to my mind. You know, I think that's the way you do stand-up comedy. you got to speak openly and honestly from the heart. You can't monitor what you say. You can't... Uh, can't worry about being politically correct. You just have to do whatever it takes to make that audience laugh. And I don't try to be deliberately offensive or do anything that's going to really piss anybody off. I like to poke buttons just a little bit. I like to find the line, cross it every once in a while. But for the most part, it's about making sure everybody has a great time. If they, if you have fun, they have fun with you. Every, you'll never have a bad show. You'll, people will come by. They'll see you. They'll come out and they'll, they'll see you come to your show again. They'll go tell people. It puts, puts good vibes out into the community. It's so much fun. But my favorite show ever was probably that Comedy Wild West show that I did from the age 19 through 28. There's 10 years of that. It was basically my comedy college education. It took me 10 years to get my doctorate degree, and I'm still out there trucking away, doing my bullshit. Like right now, Facebook Live with three viewers. So everybody, check out thebarcomic.com. Come see me this weekend in Adrian, Michigan at the Brick Wall Pub and Grill. Come see me next Saturday night. Father's Day Eve, June 16th in Springfield, Illinois at the Eagles Club, raising money for Illinois fathers. It's a single father's foundation, so please come check that out. It's going to be the Dirty Jokes and Magic Tricks show. I will put all the show information in the comments below so you can get tickets or you can direct message me or however you want to get a hold of me. But anyway, I hope to see you again soon, maybe tomorrow, here live on Facebook at 4.20 p.m., just like each and every other day, theoretically. Adios, everybody. See you soon.